All right, guys, so today's job is to fix a door jam. As you can see, we got some weather damage over here. And uh, initially, I was gonna replace the entire door jam, but I did not realize this was an eight footer uh, door. And you, you have to special order the entire door jam if you, um, if you wanna, if you want a one piece. Now, they do sell these locally. Um, but those are 80 inches. I would have had to cut it in half and then cut the hinges and it just gets complicated Especially uh, when the hinges are attached. I like to have one piece So what I'm gonna do instead is uh, I'm just gonna cut this section off right here and um, I'm just gonna cut another piece off the new one Screw it in place Blend it in patch it you guys will see and then another thing we got going on today is I'm gonna be installing the uh, threshold on the bottom so let's get to work so the first thing you need to do here is uh, just fill the area with a knife or a screwdriver and poke it and see how far up the rod uh, goes up you can tell over here it's really soft but as I go up it's like solid so right here would be good work right here i can tell it's still good over here but normally you want to go a few inches higher then you get your square and then you mark it now on the outside this is a stucco right here and then on the opposite side we got the trim um i don't want to remove the trim on the inside so i'm going to get my oscillating tool which is this one right here. There we go, so that is off. There's caulking right here, so we're gonna get that out of the way. Next, we're just gonna measure. And then right now I got 11 inches, one, 11 and eighth. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take off, just make it 11 inches even. Um, I don't want the, um, the trim touching the floor, so I'm gonna cock the bottom. So 11 inches should be fine, and that leaves eighth of an inch on the bottom so I can fill it with caulking.
All right, so since I got that piece uh, cut to size, now I'm gonna put the threshold on the bottom just to measure it, just a dry fit. Now this thicker part right here, it comes off just like this. And this part right here goes under the door. So what I normally like to do is dry fit it first just like this just to make sure that everything fits like it's supposed to okay as you can see I got a dry fit in there and everything fits just perfect now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off put some shims in the back I forgot my nail gun so I'm just gonna go ahead and screw it in place and then another thing that I like to do is I like to sand this off in an angle like a 45 degree angle going this way and then one on top going the opposite way I'll show you in a minute and the reason I do that is so that when I use the filler it has something to fill in the metal and then uh, that way it won't come off in the future. I'll show you. So I think this is ready to be screw into the uh, wood. I forgot my nail gun, so I'm just gonna screw it in place. Now there's a gap right here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that gap with a uh, bondo, and I'll show you how I do that one. There are many ways uh, of ins installing thresholds. Uh, it's a lot easier when you do it over wood because you can just literally just screw the, uh, uh, you, you know, your screws into the wood. But this one's concrete. And the previous one, they actually just glued it in place. And that's the reason why it came off because, well, if you don't use the right glue or if you don't clean the surface on, underneath it, what usually happens over time is the, wool, the, the glue is going to come off and then this will come off with time too. So what I like to do is I like to put at least um, two screws in place and uh, that way it's never going to come off. Now the screws that I use are going to be the uh, concrete screws. Let me show you. So it's gonna be this uh, concrete screws right here. So what we wanna do is we wanna pre-drill the holes first. So what I like to do is I like to set everything the way I want it. Make sure this piece right here is right underneath the, the door. And when you close the door, you just wanna make sure that it looks even on the back side because that's what people are gonna see. They're not gonna see the front, they're gonna see the back before they open the door. If this is not even with the bottom of the door, you're gonna see it crooked and that just doesn't look good. So the first thing you need to do is you need to pre-drill the holes. Now get yourself some concrete um, bits like this. And then the bit that you're gonna use, you wanna make sure that it's a little smaller than the actual screw that you're using. You want the threads of the screw to actually bite into the concrete. <laughs> The glue that I'm using today is this one right here. It's exterior, all weather, and um, I've been using it for years and I haven't had any issues with it. 
uh, to be honest, it doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you use something that is meant to be outside. And um, yeah, let's get this done. Now you can see that I have empty slots in there and the reason I do have those is because so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the bolts so that way they can sit in the holes so it looks all even. And there we go. Now what I'm gonna do is just um, put a little bit of caulking in there so it doesn't move around and boom just like that. I think that looks good right there. So since we have the uh, weather strip that's gonna go right here, I'm just gonna pre-drill a hole in there and um, and then just screw it in place. So I like to use this for wood filler. There's another one um, that's very popular. I think it's called General Purpose Bundel. I don't like that one because uh, over the over the years uh, it usually comes loose. But this one right here, for whatever reason, seems to work for me just fine. I haven't had any callbacks in a few years. So the way you do this one is you're gonna have your filler, which is gonna be this one right here, and then you're gonna get your uh, activator, which is gonna be this little paste right there. And remember, we are doing one coat right now. Normally, depending on how big the gap is, I only do two coats max. I never had to do any more than that. You don't want to put too much activator in there because it will dry on you even faster. Now remember, when doing the first coat, it's not gonna look nice. Don't worry about it. We're gonna sand it down. Um, so we're gonna let that dry for a few minutes. It's been a few minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and sand it down. While I'm waiting for the uh, patch to dry so I can sand it down, um, I'm just taping the door around so I can go ahead and prime the entire frame so it matches. I'm not painting it, the homeowner is painting it, um, but let me show you a trick. He didn't want um, me to paint the hinges. I don't like painting the hinges, but they are all rusty and, and nasty looking, but he didn't want me to uh, paint them. So what I'm doing is the easiest way to tape hinges, let me show you. Just put tape over them, try to line up the edge right here really good. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get your knife, make sure you have a new blade, and then find the edge. You can see the edge right there. And then all you got to do is just trace the, uh, the hinge. The blade will just right along the edge of the hinge in the gap and uh, that way you can just cut it to size so you can paint over it. All right, so it's been about an hour since uh, I put the second coat in. So let me go ahead and sand it down. So 
that's what it looks like after it's been sanded down. Now I'm gonna cock that area right there and then I'm gonna prime it over and then I'll give you a final look. Right, guys so as you can see I'm done um, you cannot even tell where the patch is I primed it twice it's not painted so the white stuff it's not paint it's just prime and uh, the homeowner is just gonna paint it tomorrow he's gonna let it dry I also put uh, weather a new weather strip around and I patch all the little holes around the trim too. As you can see, it looks great. It looks better than before, actually. Um, but yeah, so that was very, uh, very easy, straightforward. Um, let's see, uh, I've been there. If you count the time that I was at Home Depot and driving around, um, about five hours, actually. Four, four hours and 45 minutes so it, it really didn't take long uh, that wasn't the first time that I actually did it the first time I ever fixed that door jammed I think it took me like two days uh, it took me an entire day just to you know cut the wood and make it match and then I had to come back the second day just to sand it down and prime it but as you can see the more you do it the faster you're gonna get uh, it's nothing complicated the guy actually got several quotes from several people and nobody followed through. He even tried uh, hiring somebody uh, that quoted higher than I did, but he didn't show. Why? I have no idea. Um, it's unbelievable because as you can see, it wasn't that complicated. But yeah, so I charged, uh, this was two different jobs. One was to fix the door jam. Uh, I charged them $480 to fix it. And uh, the uh, threshold was $150. So altogether, $630. And the guy actually um, paid cash. And on top of that, he did me $20. So altogether, it was $650. Now, not all of it was profit. Um, I did spend almost a hundred dollars in supplies buying the uh, door jam and then I uh, had to buy the threshold. I didn't have any sandpaper too, so and I ran out of caulking and glue and all that good stuff. So all, all that was almost a hundred dollars. So profit for the day, $550. I did all other little work at, at his house and my battery was dying, so I didn't film it. Um, I patched a, a little uh, hole on the wall in the bathroom um, drainage uh, grill came off on the ground so I put that back on and um, I put a door handle on his uh, sliding door I didn't charge him for it because it was just quick work and it literally didn't take me more than 10 minutes all, all combined uh, so he, he tipped me $20 um, so and he paid cash on top of that so I like cash uh, payments but anyways as you can see guys if I can do it so can you um, the first time I ever did this work I had no experience I just YouTube it and went at it so He's happy, I'm happy, everybody's happy. Anyways guys, so comment below if you have any questions and um, as always, I will see you next time.